name's James Maloney. I'm uh, a teacher at Horseside Primary. I started off using technology really by accident. It wasn't what I wanted to do as a teacher. I was all into drama and I was, did, did lots of sort of gregarious over the top things and, and it sort of lent itself perfectly to my style of teaching. Um, I wasn't involved in ICT when I first came to um, the school and it wasn't my subject coordination but I found that I was using it more and more for, for these sort of off-the-cuff moments and I just wanted to somehow formalise that. Um, we started using it as our blog um, about two and a half years, three years ago now um, through the SSAT um, mm -hmm. as a way of developing writing but I was teaching Year 5 High Ability children who didn't really need help with writing and, and tried to figure out a better use of it which was give it to the kids, let them have control of it and, and the resulting was almost a snowball effect. So how did you, how did you learn about blogs? Um, David Broadfield from the SSAT came in. Um, I knew of blogs but I, I, would, I would be lying if I said that I was you know, really aware of them before that point and, and what they could do and, and he showed us how to run one and it was so mind-numbingly simple um, that I started it straight away. We got the kids involved, got writing up there and then we used it in, in, in a rather predictable way for a school. We put the newsletters on there mm -hmm. through PDFs and, and we, we uploaded photos but it was just in my opinion a glossier version of what we were, we were already doing which wasn't what I wanted to use it for. Um, so we started to get the children to make their own content. But it started off, yeah, David Broadfield started us off. Just one session, an hour long, and, uh, and I took it from there. And how, how was that received? I mean, did, were the parents able to access that, obviously? And how was that received at home? The parents saw it straight away as a, as a good thing. We had a parents' forum, which, you know, as all parents like the opportunity to voice their opinions outside of the, the, the playground mafia. And, um, and so we gave them opportunity to do that. But... but uh, allowed them to, that we controlled it through having it child moderated. Mm -hmm. So as a result of the, the, the parents being explicitly told, children are moderating this, they were very careful about what they said in the most part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it meant that there was a healthy dialogue, which was the real point of it. Um, and one thing that we've pushed at our school is communication all the way through on as many levels as possible. So it was constructive criticism Absolutely. in that sense. Absolutely. And, um, it allowed them to say thank you very much for sports day or I wish I'd have been told about swimming this week. Um, and also as a point of reference, one new starter had said, where do I get school uniform from? Mm -hmm. You know, I've been to the office, but the only time I can get is ten to, get there is 10 to nine. It's absolutely packed. Mm -hmm. Can anybody tell me? Well, the answer was, well, you go to this shop. And just simply that little bit of information saved her booking half a morning yeah. off work because yeah. she could have just rung it in Okay, now tell me to widen it out a bit, your involvement with Teach Meets. How did you learn about Teach Meets? Maybe you'd like to tell people what a Teach Meet is. But... Sure. Um, right, a Teach Meet is a gathering of like minded individuals who are interested in bettering themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be tech related, in my opinion, although it generally is. You collect together in a place, either a school or a, a city learning centre or, or a hotel, whatever, um, and share ideas. So it's an opportunity to share good practice. And what you find is you leave with at least one thing you can use immediately. And that's where I think the real power of a teach meet is because it's usable CPD. And it's a real life situation that, that someone has used in a class and gives examples of how it's made a difference to the children. And, and that, as, as a teacher, that's what I'm interested in more than, than my professional development. I'm interested in impacting positively on the children I teach. Right. Um, you can talk for seven minutes or for two minutes. Um, although most people talk for more than that, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, and the idea is that there's an opportunity to talk to people afterwards and that the, the content is, is self driven it's self you don't you're no, no longer the sage on the stage everybody is you know in charge of, of bettering each other so I like that idea I mean what I find interesting is that we you've just organized probably the most successful teach meet in the country Thank if you. not the world um, over <laughs> 150 wow. people who were teachers mm. specifically not mm. advisors mm. not other people coming from outside they were specifically teachers yeah. who wanted to use practice yeah. um, 
how did you get sucked into? We'll leave that in because it's good background. How did you get sucked into? It's break time. How did you get <laughs> sucked into the whole Teach Me uh, phenomenon? Uh, through Twitter. I joined Twitter uh, the beginning of this academic year, so about October mm -hmm. 2009, um, on the advice of my head teacher who was already on there. Right. Oh, um, and he was using it. You know, we, we do push. Web 2 technologies, we have a Web 2 group and the children road test technology, so mm -hmm. we are pushing boundaries and I thought, well, it's only fair that if I'm asking them to do things. And, and so I started on Twitter um, with a teacher, Tom Sale, at Mia side, who was already on Twitter, he, who organised the event with me. Mm -hmm. And um, he suggested, there's this conference in Manchester, it's a teach meet, I've signed you up to speak. <laughs> <laughs> And generally, on a teach meet, most people don't speak at the first one. It's the second or the third, mm -hmm. once they understand how it yeah. works. But I was thrust, thrust in at the deep end without a clue about who was going to be there or what it was really going to be mm -hmm. on. I was just told, um, they'll love what you're doing with blogs. Go along, talk about blogs. So I did, and, and I was thinking very carefully because I thought, I'm going to a conference potentially full of, well, geeks. That's what I thought it would be. And uh, incorrectly, as it turns out. But... Yeah. But I, that's what I had in my head. Um, so I was thinking, I can't use a PowerPoint because they'll, they'll boohoo me as this sort of un, un, unusable, you know, how can he bring a PowerPoint to this presentation? Um, but it's amazing, it didn't matter what was that, that I was able to take six or seven fantastic ideas from that, from that one event and it fed back straight into the classrooms of other teachers in school. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that a lot of people erroneously, wrongly think that it's to do with uh, geeks coming mm. along, coming together, yeah. where it's, it is just other teachers it's and their teachers. practice. Because it doesn't, the technology is, is in essence a catalyst for learning. It's not the be all and end all. And, and as soon as people realize that, that it doesn't matter whether you're, you're showcasing a behavior management system or a really complicated animation tool, the, the point is, it, if you use it correctly, it makes a difference, and yeah. and that's that's where the good practice comes in, and it's it's an opportunity to to, to share that good practice. Um, I I talk about technology a lot now because as a result of this, I, I I've been using an awful lot of technology because it's free. Yeah, I and, noticed that in your school you've got an ICT mark, mm. and and I think. Going along to teach me and standing up and just doing a presentation is quite character forming. Mm. Going along and actually running a teach me is, is, is one stage up. How does it feel having just run a really big teach meet and pulled in sponsors, <laughs> pulled in money, pulled in other yeah. people, publicity? It's a kind of management exercise, it isn't is, it? It is, yeah. Um, I feel tired. Yes. It's, it's, it's the honest <laughs> answer. I feel tired. Um, but I don't feel drained. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it wasn't as difficult to get sponsorship as I thought yeah. because through my pers professional learning network which is on Twitter and for anybody who is watching if you're not on Twitter it is a really useful place to find people and, and it, it is, comes down to finding people yeah. and, and following them because there are lots of really interesting people there um, it's not stalkerish as Chris Moyle says but, um, <laughs> but no uh, People wanted to help. It mm -hmm. comes down to the bottom line. So if you could think of one thing that you would say to people about why they should come along to a teach me, what would you say? Just one. Well, <laughs> give me more than one. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, one thing. At a teach meet, you will have the opportunity to be able to use things immediately to have an impact on the children you teach and that to me is the best part about it because it's instant gratification for your time spent rather than having to go to a conference and say right okay I've got to implement this it's going to take eight weeks and by the time I've got it all everybody will hate me because I've added to the <laughs> workload and there's eight, eight million test sheets to fill out and everything else like that it's no I can use that tomorrow in what I've already planned and, and that is where the power is because you've got instant, yeah, instant gratification for the, for the time you've put in the night before and also instant impact on the children in your care. And I think I'd add to that, you'd have more people, new people coming into mm -hmm. the community and the fact is, it's just a complete inspiration. Mm. And so thank you very much for that. No, you're more than welcome. Thank you.